What's up everyone, the season 16 move update has gone live which means we now know the exact stats of all the buffed slash nerfed moves and it's safe to say the community opinion on this update is quite divided, especially when it comes to Spark which got less of a nerf than I and others were expecting which is causing some people to say Lantern even got buffed. My first thoughts when I saw this was disappointment to be honest but after taking some time to think and run some simulations and play the game my opinion honestly has changed and in today's video i want to talk about that and i'll run some early rank helioptal battles at the side while we're at it first let's talk about the obviously bad astonish which was a terrible move and was supposed to get a buff uh, this update and it did it went from nine energy per move to 10 energy per move which is an increase, but it's really not gonna help any Pokemon with Astonish at all. For reference, Hex is also a 3 turn Ghost move. It's quite an average move. It does 6 base damage per move and generates 12 energy. Astonish is worse, is worse in both departments. Astonish does 1 less damage, doing 5, and 10 energy now. It's... I don't understand why... They didn't at least make it 12 energy like Hex and maybe even 13. That would have actually been kind of nice on a Pokemon with Astonish. Not game breaking at all, but no, they decided to keep Astonish awful, which I completely don't understand. Luckily, there's also a lot of good in this update, like the Sky Attack nerf, which now costs 50 energy to throw instead of 45. This knocks Noctowl and Altaria down a peg without making them unusable. Anyone remembers Noctowl from before the wing attack buff? You'll know that was pretty good back then. It was, wasn't was like OP like it is now, but it was a good niche core breaker, and it's kind of returned to that status. Also, getting rid of these flyers has opened the door for other flyers to shine, like the Aerial users, Bantine, Menabuzz, uh, what else, Gligar, because Aerial Ace got buffed, of course, from 45 to 40. I was... Kind of hoping it will be 35, but I think I like what they've done here with 40. A little bit more of a middle ground. Doesn't make the Aerial Ace users OP in any way, but it's still a nice upgrade, especially to Gligar, which we'll talk about later. Also got the Dig buff. Actually, let's talk about that right now. Dig buff. From 100 to 80 damage and from 80 to 50 energy. That is a very good buff. Dig, still not an amazing move, honestly. But it is good enough on Gligar to really elevate Gligar to the number 4 spot on the PvPog rankings currently. So that's really nice. It's also one of the only core breakers to Metacham, Registeel, Carbink core. And that's a Pokemon type you really need as Metacham, Carbink otherwise would be kind of unbreakable. So really happy uh, they, they buffed Dig that much to where it's now very usable on Gligar and the combination of Aerial Ace and Dig really make Gligar useful Pokemon. So that is very good for meta. Uh, Earthquake, of course, got nerfed, which we already knew went to 110 power. A sizable nerf, but not enough to make Stunfisk unusable. It's I think it's top 20 in the PvPog rankings right now. So still, still very good. Swampert isn't going anywhere. I think the main Pokemon that could get hit by the Earthquake nerf was really Warrain, which I don't think is going to be uh, used much more anymore. All right, moving on. X Scissor buff, I think is a good thing for some Pokemon. We already knew the damage increase was going to go for, from 45 to 65. Uh, we didn't know the energy though, but it's gone to 40 energy instead of 35, which for some bugs is an improvement. I think for Golisopod, it's a good thing. It has some extra damage on those X Scissors. But in the case of Beedrill, I actually think it would have preferred the old X Scissor because Beedrill often relied on getting to those uh, X Scissors fast and being able to bait and then get off the drill run later. Can't do that anymore. So I think on Beedrill, unfortunately, it's a bit of a nerf, but on Pokemon like Golisopod, maybe Scizor, which also has Night Slash as a third, 35 energy move. Uh, it's definitely an improvement. It doesn't really change much in the meta, honestly. I think Bug is always going to struggle, even if they were to make X Scissor a uh, Blast Burn clone, honestly. It would be a difficult move to use, but, you know, this definitely helps. Then we also have Boom Burst and Poltergeist stats. Boom Burst is now 70 energy, but who cares? <laughs> who cares? Who cares? Uh, Astonish didn't get buffed enough, so, you know. Explode doesn't get the buff I wanted, honestly. If Astonish would have been 
amazing. We could have uh, Boomer spammed with X Plout, but you know, now we can't. So who cares, right? Who cares? Then Psychic Nerf, we already knew the amount is going down by five damage, which really isn't a sizable decrease at all. It's not going to change Medi whatsoever, probably. I mean, it's number one on the Peef Poke rankings. It's still amazing, but Psychic Nerf did make some of Metachamp's answers more consistent, especially Azumarill will now be able to beat Metachamp consistently, whereas pre-Psychic Nerf, Metachamp beat Azumarill in the ones and I think sometimes in the twos even as well so yes i think azumaro is a big winner of this update honestly as uh, it's now able to beat the uh, matter champ consistently now for the most controversial change spark spark receives the damage buff from four to six damage per move in exchange for an energy generation nerf start at eight energy per move i expected it to go down to six which would have been a very nice nerf for spark lantern which was definitely needed right uh but it only went down to seven only one energy down, which is insane, honestly, because it technically makes Spark a stronger move. Wild and crazy, honestly. But the real question I should be asking myself is, does it make Lantern stronger? And at first I thought, yes, definitely. Uh, if you watch my stream, uh, boss, the move update was going live, I was quite disappointed. But honestly, after looking at, into it a bit more, I do think Lantern has gotten nerfed slightly, but nerfed. I'll explain. Firstly, just the stats. You know, it is, yes, it does more damage. And that does improve Lantern in some areas. It, Lantern can now farm down Pokemon easier because the extra damage. It's now easier for Lantern to spark Pokemon into a range where a single Surf or Thunderbolt will knock them out. That's definitely uh, going to improve Lantern in some areas. However, I think the reduced spamminess hurts it more then the increased damage helps it. Instead of getting to surfs every five sparks like it used to, it now needs six for every surf. Actually, it needs six for the first three surf. Uh, the fourth is still uh, uh, is going to be five because of the residual energy, but then the, the fifth is going to be uh, six again. So that's actually a sizable uh, decrease, and it helps ground types especially a ton. Ground types used to struggle versus Spark Lantern quite a bit, since Spark Lantern was just so spammy, especially Swampert, Shadow Swampert, who couldn't could survive two surfs. Had a very unreliable matchup there, as if the Lantern started shielding Earthquakes, you could lose the twos there, or even the ones, if Lantern got enough of an energy lead. That is now much harder. Much, much harder for Lantern to achieve. So Swampert becomes a much more reliable counter, just like G-Fisk. Just like the new ground types, Gligar and Diggersby uh, will also be better counters to Spark Lantern as the surfs just come out at a slower rate. Besides that, Lantern getting to moves at t in 10 turns was honestly pretty insane. There's not many Pokemon that can get to moves in just 10 turns, which allowed Lantern to outpace almost anything. That meant that if you let Lantern do something, you usually just throw a Surf and dip out without taking basically any damage. Or end game, if, you know, both uh, both players had like a Pokemon in the field, one was Lantern, one was something else, both low health, Lantern would win, because Lantern just outpaces. Now, that is much less likely to happen. Another scenario where Lantern will now be less good is as like a pivot. Previously, Lantern with energy lead was like super, super strong. You could just switch it in, one spark advantage, boom, you win the matchup, even though it was supposed to be, uh, you know, a bad matchup. Now, one spark of energy is going to be, you know, less worth it than it used to be. Lowering uh, Lantern's like safe swapping potential quite a bit, I feel like, which is, is a good thing, you know, <laughs> that's a nerf, that's a nerf. Besides that, and I think a bigger factor in all of this is that Sky Attack got nerfed, and we did get an Aerial Ace buff, which, you know, makes other flyers take the stage now, like Ligar, like Mantine, like Mandibuzz, which I think will be mainly ran with Snarl, by the way, and these three flyers, Pelipper 2, all have a thing in common, except maybe Mandibuzz, and it is that Grass is much better versus these flyers, you know, Gligar, Mantine, Pelipper take neutral, uh, 
than versus like Noctaw or Taria. Noctaw or Taria own grasses, you know? Venusaur had no play there. Venusaur can now take out a Gligar and a Mantine if it has like an energy lead or something. You could never do that with Noctaw. So as versus Manibus, and Manibus uh, runs Snarl, like the grasses actually have play there. Air Slash, not so much. But Snarl, yeah, definitely. So grasses will have more play in this meta. And that again puts a lot of pressure on Lantern. Makes it much harder to run. You get Diggersby and Gligar too. Diggersby and Gligar will be amazing Pokemon, especially Gligar as the new flyer. Uh, you know, puts a lot of pressure on Lantern too. The regular, I don't think, beats Lantern, but it gets close. It at least does much, much better than Octal. Um, and the Shadow actually beats Lantern in a once. So, again, more pressure on Lantern there. And I think the combination of Wonder reduced spamminess and two, just more grasses and ground types ultimately make it much harder to run a uh, lantern in the current meta sure it's not nerfed hard the extra damage definitely does help but i did think it got nerfed a little bit and maybe that's enough maybe we were we were expecting too much maybe i was expecting too much personally i wouldn't have minded like a complete meta shake up you know get rid of meta champ get rid of lantern but and get rid of stun fisk get rid of noctile but is that realistic I don't think so, actually. Thinking about it, it's probably not realistic. You know how many players are pretty casual and just want to play their battles with the Pokemon they've built? There's a lot of them. Maybe not the people watching here, but there's a lot of them that, you know, built their Lantern because it's good, built their Stunfist because it's good, and they would be pretty heartbroken if their Pokemon would be useless after. So, the way I see this update is pretty what's the word cautious i guess in a way where they did manage to nerf most of the major like two strong pokemon without making them completely unplayable which i think is a good thing i would much rather have a consistently decent to good meta that you know changes just a little bit whenever a new pokemon is added or whenever we get slight buffs and nerfs just a little bit but not enough to make it unrecognizable. Instead of, you know, what, you know, some people seem to want, which is just complete change up. You know, let's just get rid of all the top meta, new Pokemon on top. Uh, that would never work. Honestly, we would get a different meta every time it changes, but it would be shit. There's no way that's ever going well, right? Let's say they just completely change everything every season. We would have a new meta every season. I guess it would be fun for like a week, but the meta will be shit, and you'll be done with it quickly. So I think the way they've done it now with more, I can't think of the measured changes, I think, might actually be a good thing. I think they went a little low on some of the changes. I think Medi could have been hit a little harder. I'm still not 100% sure about Lantern. They completely messed up Astonish. Let's be real. They completely messed up Astonish. But what they did with Sky Attack and Aerial Ace, very smart. What they did with Dig and Earthquake, good job, honestly. And I think if we keep heading in this direction of constant, measured, but small changes to Pokemon that are too strong to make it a little less strong, we are heading in the direction of an actual, consistent, good meta. We might not be uh, there yet, but I think from what we've seen from the actually the previous two move updates is that Niantic is learning. At least, that is my take. Let me know what you think. Am I being too positive? I might be. I might be. Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.